<laughs> can't, can't tell the time here, can he? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, um, we're, we're actually on time tonight. Which is, Yay. Uh, yeah. uh, well, welcome to our normal paranormal Monday live, guys. Those that know us know uh, what it's all about. Um, those that don't know us, it's uh, maybe watching our record. Uh, myself, Gary Graham, Paul Howard, and Luke Sturgis, we're regular hosts of this program yeah. under the banner of Puppy Power Unified Paranormal Investigators. And it is what it, it does what it says on the tin. We're here to bring a bit of power unity. Um, a lot of groups want that, a lot of groups are not interested in it. Well, that's fine. Um, uh, if they're, if they're happy to carry on themselves, good luck. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, but they're always welcome to join us. Um, join, joining us basically means that we get to talk a load of rubbish, paranormal on here, meet up, have a laugh, maybe have a meal, um, at location, share, and make more friends. And that is all there is to it. Um, I'm just back from um, nine days away. Um, it started off Hellfire Caves. Uh, a really good, it turned out really good in Rendlesham Forest. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, Luke, you love Rendlesham, mate. I'll talk about it oh, in yeah. a minute, mate. Um, yeah. and That's quite Paul, a special place, isn't it, Darren? Uh, quite a special place. Mate, I found so much more about it than you could believe. Um, yeah. Paul's on all the uh, rest and recuperation over in Menorca. Um, not, not Mallorca. Mallorca is where the normal age people go. Mallorca is where <laughs> the people got <are> nuts. <laughs> Thank you. Good on you, mate. Good appreciate on you. that. I'll tell you what, mate. When you get to a certain age, you appreciate a bit of, a bit of quiet, don't you? Yeah, of, yeah, it's but, nice. But not I just need to re to... recoup from the heart attack. So. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, that's the first time it's been mentioned like, out on air sort of thing. I, I mean, everybody that knows you knows. Um, but yeah, now, yeah. you know, um, Paul, Paul suffered a, a unfortunate heart attack, which he's recovered from. Um, it was probably um, quite lucky, really, Paul. Um, yes, no, very, very. Whatever. Yeah, um, very lucky this time. Yeah. Yeah. That's had some good, you know, I rushed into a good hospital. They knew what was going on. You know, I wouldn't, I couldn't fault them. You know, they're absolutely brilliant with me. Okay, I didn't have any anaesthetic to have the operation, but by that time I wasn't bothered anyway, really. To be honest. <laughs> I wasn't really bothered, to be honest with you. You know, I was in there and, you know, people not the NHS and all of that, but they came for me. You know, they really did look after me. So. They moaned about the surgeon or the specialist being 15 minutes late or the fiver they've got to pay in the car park. And yeah, that yeah. The million pounds worth of of help they gave. Um, definitely, definitely one, saved my life, that's for sure. One thing I will add to that is um, car parking in hospitals in England, I think, should be made free. I don't yeah. really know. Um, if not for everybody, let's make it free for the, the, the guys that have been married for 40, 50 years, and one of them has had to go and have a bit of a jaunt in hospital, and the other one has to park there every day just yeah. to see one yeah um or a private car parking company finds them yeah That's, so come on let's have a bit of compassion let's yeah. um let's be british absolutely be british absolutely um so darren so, tell us about rendlesham forest we're interested very interesting very interesting um i'm allowed to mention the, the i've asked him permission and yeah. he he says okay his name okay, is okay cool Ronnie Dugdale, um, you want to do some research on Ronnie Dug Dugdale, Paul, and you yeah. also, he's an interesting guy, he, um, he's also a nice guy, really nice guy, um, what, what happened is I was trawling through videos and whatever, and um, I saw a really brilliant vid video on... Um, so, what, I know his real name. I'm not going to say his real name on there. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. Um, yeah. And um, I messaged him and I said, mate, that's a fantastic video. This guy's got 120,000 followers. He's massive. And it's on Rendlesham Forest. 
And Ronnie Dugdale, I didn't realise how well known he was, was like was on this program on this video commentating. And he's the one that introduced me to the fact that the UFO trial isn't the real UFO trial. It is, but it is. And um, I contacted the creator of this uh, video, not expecting to get anything back. 120,000 uh, subscribers. You know, he's getting 80,000 views per video, more sort of thing. And um, well, two days later, guess what? I get an email. Oh, yeah. hi, Darren. I'm sorry, I'm not in the area, blah, blah, blah. But thanks for, for reaching out and saying it's a good video. Really nice yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, and the next thing, I get to the email in my inbox from Ronnie Dugdale. Hi, Darren. What do you want to know? Yeah. Uh, until, nice. until, until I asked him permission, um, because he's obviously got an agent and he charges extortion fees to talk and then he... Yeah. You know, and... Um, then he replied to me when I was actually at Rendlesham. He said, look, I've trawling through my emails. I'm so busy. I've got so many people. Uh, I can show you the emails somewhere. Um, he said, um, here's my private number yeah, and uh, my Facebook. Um, why don't you listen to anything you want to know? Um, I've also got another few people that have contacted in much the same way. It's all come together. But Ronnie Dunga, what an interesting guy. He's, right, we've, we've hired a parking spot at a village hall, 10 of a night. I'm like, oh, it's nice. not, there was a, a campsite right on the back of Edwardshire Forest. He's closed down. First year's closed down. I was a bit sick for that. Uh, I thought, yeah. well, this is a mile and a bit away, mile one point four or something mile road here, yeah, away from uh, the landing site. Great. So I booked it's a ten a night, and I didn't mean to book it, but I went for an inquiry and it automatically booked it. So I said to her, um, on the way up to our annual um, music festival, we've I've just booked us a site in Rendlesham. She said, Rendell, she, I heard that place. What about that? That's, this is last year. Mm. And um, anyway, she paid it and all and whatever. Anyway, we got there. Um, we drove from Hellfire Caves. Yeah. Uh, off the uh, and then went, rang the woman that runs this village hall. Oh, what time can we park? And she went, oh, anywhere. Anytime she went, just get on. She went, you're fine. Um, you're the only one tonight. I'm allowed six. So we got there. It's in the middle of nowhere. You know what Rendlesham's like, Paul? Yes, yeah. And um, in the middle of nowhere, we've pulled in. And can we park on the grass? I don't know. So we just parked out the front. Yeah. Um, I had a bit of a doze off. But there's a kid's playground. Kids have gone and played. Uh, dog sat there. Next thing, I've, I've cooked a bit of grub. And this woman's turned up. And I said, oh, hi, yes. She went, yeah, you're Darren, are you? I said, yeah, yeah. She said, oh, yeah, my name's Liz and so forth. I said, oh, I said, well, are we allowed to park on the grass? She said, anywhere you like, as long as you don't go past the sides. I'm like, wow, it's all mature trees and willow. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful place. Grass. So um, anyway, we're the only ones there. There's a few houses down the track. And, and um, Angela says to me, well, we've got our own facilities on the van. But she said... Um, there's a pub up the road and it closes at like eight o'clock. She says, let's go and have a pint and use their toilets, yeah? Yes. So we've literally gone to the top of our little track. Yes. Yeah. All around there, obviously, yeah. Look left and there's the pub. And I'm like, wow, that's easy. So they've got three bench tables out the front. So I've sat on, she's gone in, kids have come running out. No, they've got all board games. We're allowed to bring them out the front and play with them. I'm yeah. like, well, wow, that's good. So they run around the table. Angela's gone, what do you want to drink? I said, I'll get some lager top. So she went, try that. And he said, think like Stella glass, a bowl. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I can breathe properly, yeah. She said, she said, try that because it's a, a Spanish lager. She says, ever since she's got it in, everybody wants it. So um, it was beautiful. I told you that, didn't I? It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, as we're going, 
I went, and that's it. We sat there. I said to Andrew, I said, go and get us a third one. So she went, I think I'll have like a, a, a I don't know, a, a short and whatever. So the woman brings it out to our table. She went, there you go. She went, no, that's all right. She went, that one's on me. No. Went, really? The landlady's bought us our third drink. She went, where are you staying? The village hall? Went, yeah. She went, there's no facilities around there. I said, it's all right. We've got facilities in the van. She went, back gate's open. She said, um, you just come in any time you want and use the toilets. Oh, wow. So <laughs> we, um, we struck a goal there. There's also a cinema in the back, 21 seats. Um, they do meals for a tenner, a tenner, like all home cooked. And oh, we nice. Went, we didn't want to leave the other night. We went up there for burger and everything. It was too nice. Um, it was really, really nice. Really, really Lovely. nice. Anyway. They're very, um, friendly, very friendly around that area. Yeah, anyway, the first day we got there, we, we got up the forest and whatever, and, and Ronnie hadn't got back to him at this stage. So we we went to the main visitor centre, and um, I could only make halfway round uh, because of my back, obviously. Yeah, and, sure. Um, Angela went all the way round, and then the next day, Ronnie's messaged me, and I'm like, "Look at this! Look at this! Look at this!" Yeah. She went, so I said, "Where were the landing sites?" I had a really long Facebook conversation with Ronnie, and he told me within feet and inches, basically where it landed and so forth and um hey ho the next day we had to go back didn't we so um yeah i've got it on a video a hell of a lot of video um which i've got to put together obviously yeah but when you're at the real landing site you know you're at the real landing site um yeah because the one they depict in the film and uh and the documentary is not the actual landing site. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, my GoPro stuck up above the door. Remember? It's all right as long as it's still there. Um, we'll look down the road. And <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, we'll look up there in a minute. Yeah. But what um, you see in the documentaries and all of that is not the true landing site. Yeah, it's all fabricated, mate. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you know what? Right, they they're saying it could be the lighthouse at Orford Ness that they saw. It's in the wrong direction. Yeah, it's in the wrong direction. You know, it, not only is it six miles away, it's in the wrong direction. And these are experienced airmen; they're not yeah. goons. Yeah. Um, I, I've I've had one airman ex and co contact me and he said um without giving too much away yes yeah. they they tried to come down and tell us subtly that we were seeing the lights at orphan ness and one of us stood up in the meeting and said to you, what do you take us for idiots um yeah. <laughs> we, we've been flying um jet fighters yeah we've been trained to um, and you think we don't know what a lighthouse looks like to a an aircraft? Yeah, and, exactly. um, so well, it's what people want to believe at the end of the day, mate. It's the same yeah, as the white well, angel that walks the woods, isn't it? You know, if people want to believe yeah. it's them or not, it's down to them. But as far as I'm yeah. concerned, yeah, now I've been there, the event really happened. I yeah. had the meet, I had the meter on me, all right. And it was going off at certain areas. Um, mm. You know, you all the trees were replanted. And yeah. um, it was going off at certain areas. It's, um, but I will be going back. Um, I mean, it's quite a way into the woods. You're going to go to get yeah. to this. Yeah. So when you, when you listen to the local people's story, it's so different to the actual what actually happened, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're told what you need to know, and that's it, not what actually happened. Well, it, it's, yeah, yeah. There's also a house in the woods that vanishes and disappears. Um, 
there's um, a story on that as well. Um, basically, it's a, an, a house that's been demolished and a new house built on top. And there was a guy that was interested in in going and buying it. And he went and viewed it. Um, and it lovely newish house and beautiful garden and whatever all its own. And they went back the next day and it wasn't there. Um, yeah. There was an old house there with a country garden on it and so forth. Um, so, it, it, you know, it's a very strange area. Um, yeah. I also found out that Alistair Crowley's cult are still practicing witchcraft in there and yeah. magic, yeah. Um, which is quite coincidental, isn't it, to where I was the previous month? Yes, so uh, maybe the two are linked, and um, but that wouldn't surprise you if that wasn't the truth, would it? You know. Because, because you think of you think of that and Hellfire Caves and you know Alistair Crowley and that's all these the, sorts of... that's the oil I've got. All oh, right, yeah. Nice. All right. Yeah. So um Yeah. Emerald. So, well, a lovely paint and awesome. Um so I wish I'd have had it. Well, actually, no, I don't wish I had it with me last week. For the simple reason, Ronnie turned around and he said to me, he said, um, be careful in the woods down. He said, not all things are friendly in there. He said, take protection um, and make sure nothing attaches itself to you. And there are certain areas which feel darker than others. But my every intention is that I will um, go back there and um, oh, they, uh, yeah, they could probably actually stay in there late for the lights. Um, I have every intention of going back on bikes and yeah. doing a, a much, I think they can stay in there as well, yeah. Um, but you, you know, do, when you were in there, did you feel how you could get disorientated in there very much so. nothing very makes much. sense when you're standing when i went in there yeah. with my brother law many years ago nothing really made sense when you were standing there then you were looking around but everything looked the same so you're thinking to yourself which way did we come in but my brother-in-law knows it really well because he's from that area from a child you know and you look and you think oh my god and it, it literally disorientates you in there. It's such a strange you place. Clue of where you are. No, you no. Clue. And um, I've yeah, disorientation you like. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it's a weird place. It's a weird, weird place. I, I mean, it, it, basically, I, I'm, I'm pretty good. Always have been. Um, at um, bushcraft um, directions and so forth. I was brought up by an ex World War II paratrooper. Mm. So, you know, the first thing he did was take me into the woods and got me lost. And he taught yeah. me how to lay a track and traps and things like that. And um, when I was in Rendlesham, I didn't have any compass. My compass right. just went. And yeah. I'm like, well, I had to start thinking, you know, I've turned left, and I've turned right, <laughs> right, left, hot. Yeah. And I'm like, so the van should be that way, yeah? yeah? And then Andrew's got this sort of makeshift map that the Forestry Commission have given us. Uh, that's oh, quite right. fun. Interesting, because there's a guy going to be on the video, which I've never, ever met before, and I mm -hmm. haven't got any of his content details. And he knows South Coast Ghosts, and I told him about the oh, YouTube. Nice. And the only way he can, I've left it that way, so the only way he can talk, contact me is through YouTube. And, you right. know, if it's strong enough, the attraction there to, to be something, yeah? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> we were sat having a break on the um, tin UFO that they got there, 
and this guy walks up with a little dog starts talking and it became apparent he's quite aware and and awake and whatever and he was talking about that he's been here before and he's been to talks and whatever and so forth um obviously he didn't know us we didn't know him and I said, yeah. well, I'm trying to find the, the real landing site on day th of night three. And um, he, sure enough, um, he was one interested. He said, can I join you? And I said, yeah, mm. you're more than welcome. And he was with us for over an hour. And, nice. Uh, he, he, he's on the video. So when I finally get around to making the bloody video, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, um but no i mean it uh, the plan was we were going to do a lot of other places and yeah so forth. i found it that intriguing and interesting that i was just researching all the time we had very little internet where we stayed um yeah as you know last week's paranormal monday live um very little internet and so it was really slow but I was replying to emails and so forth, asking more questions, whatever. And I didn't get around to doing them. So now I've got to um, get ready to get back out there. Um, See, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised you even got a signal there. A lot of times it's blanked out. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if it's because Woodbridge is closed now. That it's not so bad, but Don't know. Um, I mean, because look at, um, not far from there, you have like the uh, um, Lake and Heath, don't you? The big American air base at Lake and Heath, which yeah. is not that far from where you are. There's Lake and Heath, and there's Milden Hall. Milden Hall was a big one, wasn't it? That's a massive one, yeah, yeah, yeah. They say the Americans are not in there, but they are, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if Milden Hall's still open or not. Yeah, uh, it's a massive. Um, it's open. You obviously you restricted where you can go, but it's like a village built on there, like a massive American village. Yeah, I, I remember being in Milden Hall in a pl in a play park when I was a child. Oh um, right, yeah, yeah. Um, well, no, nice, nice place. I, but... Some other good news. Um, I'm finally fine tuning my past life regression. Oh, nice. Uh, very, very, yeah. So, I want I, when I do hypnosis, I do it 100% correct. I don't mess around with the mind unless I really know what it's doing, yeah. Um, and what I'm doing to it. So, I've got an absolutely superb guinea pig, the best one possible myself. <laughs> I'm I'm probably the hardest person to hypnotise you'll ever meet. Um, even though I've been many years I've been a hypnotist and a hypnotherapist. Um, yeah. I mean, Luke will tell you at Fort Widley one night. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I just put you under, didn't I, Luke? Bang. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. And you didn't <laughs> even see it coming, did you? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I know what I'm doing, um, uh, and perhaps that's why I'm really hard because I know what you're doing, and yeah. uh, I don't know, but um, I can self hypnotize really well. Um, I've for the last couple of years I've been, especially when I'm on my tablets, and Angela was really in a lot of pain yesterday, yeah, in the middle. I gave her some of my one of my tablets and she said she had the best night's sleep ever. Um and the pain went. Yeah. <laughs> um ever since I've been on the proxin, I seem to be able to do a lot better than myself. Um and I've been I've been going somewhere. I've been going I've been going back to previous somewheres because the people are the same and you you know you can't read in a dream you know that no yeah. no that's why if um you've got something demonic visiting you at night it will be in a dream it won't actually be there but it's coming 
is so realistic you think you are awake um right state write something above your bed a sign and remember it's there and look up and try and read it if you realize you won't be able to read it um well i cracked it about a month ago i woke up and i'd already read stuff in my dream so i knew i weren't dreaming yeah mm. interesting, interesting. And, uh, the other night i i've always had a pool with scotland always the west coast yeah. and the islands and horses and, and water and golden sand and i'm gonna have to research it um but i was almost like um a william wallace character mm, that, quite possibly which was lesser known yeah yeah um a nice bloke really nice yeah. bloke but very rebellious and i've i can see myself walking on the sand and having this flea-bitten gray horse um and perhaps that's that's why i don't know i don't know but the plan is when i've got a bit more energy i can keep going back and back and back some nights some mornings i wake up and i can't sleep i can't i haven't slept well i have but not yeah. in my mind yeah 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 so um i think i have an affinity with the air force the RAF. Because I seem to know things about military stuff, you know, and I can't say that I've ever researched anything military or anything like that. But I had, I had a dream. Um, well, I don't know if you not a dream. We were around. Um, I might have told you we were around uh, one of Jenny's friends on June the sixth. We were sitting there, and suddenly I said, "Oh, June the sixth, so oh, it's D Day, nineteen forty-four, June the sixth, D Day," and they looked at me and went. Oh, all right i said why don't you know this and they're looking at me saying what do you mean i said it's d-day it's actually d-day it's night 1940 blah 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 July, you know all that sort of stuff and they're saying well where are you then i said well i can't you really see me i'm outside a shop and i could see myself as an air air raid warden outside the shop looking at a book in my head you know and then they realized what was going on and they asked kept asking me questions well, where are you now? Where, what, you know, what, what place are you in? Hello. So, hi, Dora. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. So, <laughs> that's all right. so, so <laughs> I could see myself standing outside the cor a corner shop, you know, looking at a book. And I can only imagine it was like a Russian book, you know. Yeah. And suddenly uh, they're saying to me, where, what, you know, where are you? I said, what do you mean, where am I? What, why don't you not know where we are? We're in Red Hill. We're by the air, aerodrome at Red Hill. And they went, right, and what's going on around you? Well, I've got to rush because there's, there's a plane crash. There's a plane crash on the airfield. And all this, and I'm sitting there with my eyes shut, and I could see everything happening. And I could see myself running along a road, you know, and over a fence in a garden and out the back. And as I got out the back, I jumped over this big fence, and there was this plane, a light, absolutely burning. And they're saying, okay, what colour's the plane? Well, the plane's green, but it's got stripes on it. It's like, like the Italian colour. It's green and red and blue stripes on it. I said, OK, what else can you see? I said, it's men falling out of the plane. It, it's, it's come off the runway. It's come off the runway. They're falling out of the plane. They're alive. They're burning. And people are trying to put them out. So this story went on for about 10, 15 minutes, like, and I was answering all the questions. What time is it? What's this? What's that? They're saying. And then it got near the end, and they're saying, OK, so... so it, no, the first thing that happened, it was 1942, was the first time I connected, where I was standing on the corner, right? So after the plane crash, it seemed to go, jump forward a lot, Yeah. you know? So, and then, then it was 1944. And so it's 1944, it's June the 6th. Why do you not understand that? Why are you not watching? Why are you not listening? Reading the papers, look, can't you see... You know, it's, this is D-Day. This is the do, do all and end all the battles. And then for the split second, I was actually in, a, in an aeroplane, like a bomber. Like I could hear the... And the... You know, bits hitting the plane. I'm thinking, what? 
And then suddenly, after about five minutes of being in that, and it went black, bang. Like I got the names Johnny Johnson and, and uh, the, the other guy was, uh, the other co-pilot was TikTok Johnson. And I got them names and I don't know how I got them names, right? So suddenly the whole thing went blank. And then I saw this Johnny Johnson standing there on the ground with this, what I thought was looked like a pocket watch here. He kept yeah. looking at it. And I'm thinking, what's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? You'll ask Jim when you see our neck. Because they were asking me all the questions, it, you know. And I thought, he's looking. I said, he's looking at a watch. He's looking at a watch. It must be a Pacific time. It must be a time, something or another. And then suddenly I came back to, back to normal time. Um, and they said, do you realise where you've just been? I went, what? What do you mean? They said, you weren't here. I said, yeah, I was, of course I was here. I mean, where else would I have been? And they told me the story. She actually recorded it on her phone. Not Jen, another woman. So she played it back. So I Googled it, and Johnny Johnson and TikTok Johnson were bomber pilots, and they were shot down in 1942 and crashed at Red Hill and crashed into the gardens at the back of Red Hill, and they were burnt. So for two years, they convalesced as being burnt pilots. And then on 9, June the 6th, 1944, they were the <coughs> first bombing squadron into France, and they were actually shot down over a village in France and killed. And... When you read it on Google, when you go along, uh, Johnny Johnston was the squadron leader and he was given the Medal of Valour. And that's what he had on his top because I saw a picture of him. And and so the Google, you know, and I was just blown away how I knew this. And do you know what, what really sort of threw me? We went to Biggin Hill a few months ago. Because they have op often have open days there. You go around the museum and that. Great yeah. place. And who's standing in front of a bomber in a picture? Johnny Johnson and Tick jo Johnson standing in front of their bomber plane killed in 1944 with the D Day, June the 6th. They were shot down. They're the first bomber to take casualties over on D Day. What? Uh... How, how do you explain? And, that, and that's what I seem to have an affinity with something to do with the Army, the Air Force, or the forces. I don't know. So it'd be interesting to go back. And find out whether I was something in the war, whether I was, I don't know. I really don't know. But when you ask CJ and asked her about it, and the, the evidence that I was giving, it's like when you Googled it, it was spot on. How would I have known the names? How would I have known the date? And I, they're saying to me, listen, I'm going, what's the matter with you two? How do you not know it's 1942? Can't you tell? We need to get the rations and, the, you know, we're doing this and we've got to do that tonight. How would I have known that? And when you Google it, there was a shop right on the corner in Red Hill, not for about a 10 minute walk, really, from the from the airfield. And, there, and it was where the pilots used to go and get their groceries and bits and pieces before they flew out, you know, to chop bits and pieces. And that and I described the shop because I saw this. What I thought I was was like an air raid warden. That's how I can only describe what amazing. I look like. It's amazing. Crazy, out. isn't it? How yeah. amazing is it? I'm but really intense. Um, you know, I'm, it's like I'm going to another lifetime. Mm. Life flying. And now yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my self on the regression. It's yeah. most, I don't know how to explain it. It's, I'm actually there. And I mean, Andrew's saying you're talking so much in your sleep. Um, <coughs> and, and it, I think we out the other night because she woke up. Um, she she's on the front uh, bench behind the driver's seat, and yeah. we've got a proper king size mattress at the back of the. Um, I mean, it really, it's nice memory foam. Um, yeah, I don't want to write it. Yeah, it's eight inches thick. It's like any, <laughs> anyway. It's it's beautiful, it really is, and. Um, she said she woke up and she looked back towards the back of the van and there was this dark figure standing there snoring. Oh. And she saw like closed her eyes and she then she peered up again and she went, It was Darren. Right. So um she like said, um, what are you doing? And I just snored, so it was apparent I was asleep. <laughs> um, do, you think, do you think you're having out of body experiences? Yeah, yeah, 
she that's said, what I think. Yeah, she said, um, and then she woke up for half hour to an hour earlier or something later, and um, I was still standing there snoring ahead. So she just went to sleep and forgot about it. Um, but interesting, the, really the interesting. Is, where our bed is, um, it's higher than the work surface at home without the mattress. So we have to have a step to climb onto it. Yeah. 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 So it's not like you just get off the bed and get on the bed. You climb yeah. in it and you climb out of it. So, and I can't remember doing either. <clears throat> Does she remember you being by the side of her when she sat up and looked? Well, she just, where is she? Amy? Heel? <laughs> that would be interesting to know if she saw you laying on the bed, but you were actually standing. Because that would prove a, of an out-of-body experience, wouldn't it? Because right. people have one. that under surgery, don't they? Some people go yeah. to major surgery and they actually see themselves on the table, don't they? Yeah. yeah. You know? Amy, the other night. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Amy has a Deadpool top, don't you, Amy? Yes. So do I. <laughs> Amy went away for a day to see um, Real Daddy, yeah? All oh, right. Things, um, and, um, and came back, she, Mummy gave her a Deadpool t shirt. As present, and came back and found she found Darren also had Deadpool t shirt um, in full view of four and a half thousand other people, didn't you? Anyway, I didn't really care that much. No, I was a bit pissed off with that, bought them as a joke. Anyway, mm -hmm. the, the other night you said that I was, you woke up and I was standing there. Yeah. Right. Could you see me lying on the bed as well? Mm -hmm. It was too dark over there, so yeah, too dark. She didn't really look. I was barely awake. So I just saw you standing there and I heard you snoring, and I was like, okay. So I just went back to sleep. Blind, aren't I? <laughs> Did you actually see the features, Amy? Did you actually see and any he features? He was facing away from me. He was turned in the corner and he was just standing, really still snoring. That's strange. Very. Don't you remember getting up? Nothing. Can't remember anything. Now that is quite scary, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Sounds like sleepwalking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or an out-of-body experience. It's one of the I woke up because I opened my door and you were just standing there. Did he say anything? Door. Amy, did he say anything to you? Or... No, he was just snoring really loudly. Even though you were standing there. Yeah. yeah that wouldn't really make sense because how are you going to snore yeah. properly standing up? Standing up, that's right. Go, go, go. You can't, can you? No. Because well, your lungs are not compressed and your air pipes is straight, yeah. isn't it? Not old fat. Boom. Have you checked the van? No, make sure you ain't brought someone back. <laughs> you ain't brought an alien mm. back with you, have you? <laughs> 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 I'll, uh, mm. <laughs> I, I will have um, I will have when we finish this on the debrief tonight um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more but I'm not going to publicise it yet no, um, no. because myself and another person here um, down south anyway yeah um are doing something very, very exciting. Yeah, right. Nothing like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, do we really want to know that? <laughs> I know we're all growing Bungie. up. But, hey, mate, you know, keep it clean. <laughs> you only live once, don't you? <laughs> yeah, don't, don't make my heart speed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, that, that's I haven't thought of that before. It's proper snoring standing up, that's a little bit, yeah. Uh, what um, would you, what would you, I know when you go to bed, do you wear pajamas or do you, or do you what do you wear? It's 
bit personal, Paul. I know, I know you probably wear, wear your gimp stuff, but you know, apart from yeah. that, it's, <laughs> all I'm trying to find out is if she could well, see what you night. were standing in, whether you were standing in in a t shirt <laughs> or whether you've got any features that she could see from you from the back. That's all. Well, this particular night was probably a pair of Marvel boxer shorts and so all else, <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that's quite strange, isn't it? Much, but they're on special offer. <clears throat> yeah, I do. I do two, love two for one. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah, very interesting. And it did only happen the once. Uh, we... uh well, she reckons that one night <clears throat> she woke up and I was standing in her doorway, just saying nothing. Which, you know, I might even go in a room in the daytime. Yeah. One yeah. for obvious reasons. The second, because it's a shit tip. No? Um, but I, I, you know? I reckon that was not you. I don't reckon that's you. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't when you said that, you. I fall, I've, I've got that feeling that someone stand above you. It yeah. wasn't you. Yeah. That's what I feel. I don't think it was you in there. You either bought something out of that forest or whatever and was having a look. And Amy just happened to see it at that time. I think you could be right. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think you could be a hundred percent correct. So she said she could hear the snoring. You were still asleep on the bed, but assumed that the person standing there was you snoring. Yep, yeah. But it wasn't me snoring. No. Well, it may have been me snoring in bed, but hmm. not if you're standing there. Hey, mate. What makes you think it was me in the first place? You can see the back of my head. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it was that dark. Yeah. Weird. But now, yeah. now you've mentioned these things, it's like even weirder. Yeah. You know but I, I mean? don't think that was, I don't think that was you standing there. I think the snoring was you on the bed, asleep, and she assumed it Bye, from whatever was standing there because she heard the snoring. But that was actually you on the bed and not the shadow standing there. Yeah. Because how could you stand and snore? Well, great difficulty. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Great difficulty. Very interesting. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I wish I'd have had a sleep recorder now. <laughs> See it would have, would have been interesting to leave um voice recorder on, wouldn't it? I, I leave it overnight in the camper van. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm you know what you know what I'm getting, don't you? Like chanting. Is anybody getting chanting? I didn't yeah. want to say that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting that. Yeah. I don't like to say that because it could probably be quite yeah. scary for yourself and the family, but I'm I can hear chanting. Yeah. You know when you came out of Hellfire Cage, you were all clear, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, yeah it was. Didn't feel anything that was with me anyway. Well, you'd know anyway, wouldn't you? So. Well, I'd like but to I think, think so. I would like oh, to think. Oh, definitely, definitely. But I think. I don't know why I'm getting chanting like, like a monk in a hooded cloak and that type of thing. That's what I'm really getting now. Perhaps why he would be in your van, I don't know. Perhaps trying to keep me quiet to stop me picking up. Well, <clears throat> quite possibly. You've got to remember, you know, places like Hellfire Caves and 
you know, Cheddar Gorge and all of them sorts of places were all in the big boys club. Yeah. You know, and even as far out as Rendlesham and all of them places would have had similar sorts of cults or if you want to call them a cult, I don't know, you know, similar sorts of big boy gangs and places that they would have done this type of um, stuff, for want of a word. But I don't know why, but I just think there's, there's chanting, there's something, uh-huh. something hooded, something cloaked around you, not around you, but was with you. It, it I don't does, know why. It, it, the more you talk about it and the more you think about it, the more weird it is. It's very, it's very weird. Yeah. Well, it'd be interesting what? to do a bit more digging. Yeah. You know where you stayed in that, that um, playing field or wherever you stayed? Did, did you do know much about that? No. Um... Hang about all um because I'm th- I'm thinking there's a church or there's something very close by there. Something uh, something to do with monks, something to do with chanting monks or oh, there's, um, it... down the road mm-hmm. there is um what is it? Uh well, you've got St. John's the Baptist Church. Yeah. Um, and then you've got um, oh, some priory down there. Um, there's a you really, know the... Sorry. really, really, really um, famous uh, priory there. Butley Priory, that's it. Butley Priory. Yeah. No, I bet um, that was. How far away was were you from that? Um, let's have a butchers. Butley Abbey, Butley Priory. No, I think it's the Priory. Something to do with the Priory. And I think that's somewhere out where you were. Probably half a mile. That's it. Um, yeah, half a mile. Um, Butley Priory. It's supposed to be one of the most scenic wedding venues um, in nope. the world. Also, that's a connection to the pub as well. Yeah, there's a connection to that pub you were in as well. Yeah, I know, I know. I knew that when I was there. I knew there was a connection. Yeah. I, knew, I knew there was a woman um, looking at me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what I'll do, Paul, is I will send you the, um, why doesn't it bring me up the bloody website? Oh, here we are. Um, I'm going to send you the websites. Yeah. Of where we stopped. And you, you do a bit of. I will. Yeah. What I'll do is I'll send it to all of you in the in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll have a dig. Um, and all we'll of have you have around. a dig. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dora's the one at the top of the page, so she gets it first. Oh, um, okay. okay. Yeah, all right. Don't rub it in. Not like us bums at the bottom of the ladder, eh, Luke? <laughs> Ladies first, yeah? Okay. Oi, oi, oi. Since when? Since when does that work? <laughs> <laughs> oi, we're equal, mate. Don't you worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> No sexual quality here, mate. We're all as even as each other. Yeah, you want your equal rights, you can push the car when it breaks down as well. <laughs> um, but I really, I really do think um, what I'm getting <coughs> that, that that was a monk, that's something to do with that pub and that priory. It's not the church, it's the priory. Um, and then this is the the priory's coming through now. Okay. I'll have a look um, in a bit. Yeah. So that's all coming through to you now. Yeah, um, got it. The priory. Um, that, there's loads around here. You know, where, they, where the landing was? Yeah. 
um, he's really behind the Priory. Right. Um, and the Abbey, it's a sort of a small triangle looking at it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, have, have a look and, and see what you think, what you feel. <coughs> yeah. When you, when you have a look, see what you can find out. Be interesting. Be very Yeah, I'll ask, I'll ask um, my brother Law on that because he, he knows around that area really, really well. Yeah. So I'll ask um, him what, what he knows about that area. And I think you probably know quite a bit, to be honest. It's quite a nosy git. <laughs> Good. But I do, Good. I do, well, I do that, think there's some. Uh, yeah. The woman that owns the pub, uh, I half expected the pub not to be there the next day. It was too nice. Yeah. Um, Jane, her name is, and she bought it during the scandemic. And, All right. Uh, that was her first year, but yeah. And uh, I like just, 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 just a scandemic, didn't he? <laughs> yes, I really said oh, scandemic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and was um, it called the Royal Oak? No, the Oyster Inn. Oyster, okay. I mentioned it to my brother, like that's all. The one where the airman used to drink is now yeah. called the, the Unruly Pig, and it's a gastro. Um, Right. And that is on the Ipswich Road. Yeah. That's that's where the airmen used to. That's yeah. 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 Um, but if I mean the, the map, you if you put in Butley Butley Village Hall, it will yeah. take you on Google Maps and you know, zoom out a little bit, you'll see the priory, the UFOs, Abbey, um, and then lit Does that make a triangle, Darren? Darren, them three points, do they make a triangle? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That is it. Anyway, right. Um, on my next holiday is going to be Menorca. Um, <laughs> you can come with me anytime. Either, either that or your next holiday is going to be in a camper van at Butley Village Hall with Maple. That's perfectly right. fine. As long as you don't fart. <laughs> no farting allowed, mate. It's got to be peace. I'll tell you what, mate. You could have five nights there, right? And mm -hmm. ple plenty of drawing around Rendlesham Woods, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Every day, right? Doing different experiments and different bits and meeting people. It you could eat every night at that oyster inn for a tenner each. Yeah, right? yeah. For nothing, in it. Eat like a. What was the food like, Angela? Food at the oyster. Yeah, it's lovely. The burgers were amazing. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely. And the portion of chips was massive. Massive portion of chips. Are you, are you sure they were beef and not alien? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you eat and eat too. Well. You know, if if two of you went, stayed there five nights, had your evening meal in the pub, it cost you for five nights a hundred and fifty quid. How can it's you? Not, how can yeah. you not? You know what I mean? It's cheap, cheap as chips, um, isn't it? Absolutely amazing, and you yeah. open your your door onto grass, yeah, and. Now and again, old Adder on Tuesday. You know, is it Tuesday or th tu no? Wednesday, Tuesday night they had dog training, so a lot of people drove down locally in six, seven cars, and they were out the back of the village hall doing dog training. Um, and then on Wednesday night they had yoga. It's that sort of community. It's a tenner an hour to rent the village hall. A tenner an hour. Did you go to the yoga class in there? Well, mate, I was running it. That's it. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it, 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 that's that's the thing. When you've got a little hand like that, you can just do these yeah. places. To, the closest place to stay was miles away. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And you, you yeah. could drive in, and it's so expensive, mate. It's like I, I could not afford to do it. 
next time I will take um, a couple of fold up electric bikes with me just to get around the forest a bit quicker. Um, yeah. Got, it's massive got, forest though, isn't it? Yes. What is it, 3,000 hectares or something? Stupid. Something like that, yeah. Huge place, huge. Huge, huge forest. And you, um, and you think a lot of that forest wouldn't have been discovered either, walked through, or anybody been near it? Well, if you walk through it today and something happened there tomorrow, you're not going to see it happen for another few years, are you? No, nah, that's right. Yeah. It's like a year, isn't it? But the area of the real landing, they immediately went in and felled the trees. Immediately. Um, they took the imprints. Now, there's another guy that came forward a few years later, and he actually touched the craft. And all right. He, and decoding it, this has all been covered up, in it? Yeah. Um, it, it, it said it was there for humanity. Mm. There for humanity. Mm. So all these, things, all these things that I'm, I'm finding out aren't on open access. They're not all there. The people I've spoken to got emails from um, and yeah. so forth. Um, I've got to change the way they're said and worded and so forth. They're not so they're not on the internet. It's all taken down. Um, people have gone missing through it as well. But why? Yeah, the forest. Well, but why? Uh, why do you it, think? Though? Why do you think? Yeah. Why? I mean, why? It's on a need, need to know basis. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what it is. And when you right. start digging like you have, it wouldn't surprise you if you start getting knocked on your camper van door. Yeah, well, it, it needs a few of you to walk through the woods if you're doing something like that. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And you've got, um, to, you know, you've got to lay down a trail of a way in and way out. Because you well, can come I, out I, miles from where you originally went in. Yeah, well, we, we was parking down the Forestry Commission Road where they've mm. got their little car parks. Um and it's just basically straight right, left, like 90 degree angle turns. Right. So it didn't feel as bad because when you're going on them little tracks, they sort of gradually turn around. And yeah, yeah you, you could get severely lost in them woods, severely. Quite, yeah, quite scary. But it was actually quite funny because the guy that we met in there, Paul, he parked his car on the verge to save the plane of fiver. Yeah. And we got back to the van. And he's like just about to say goodbye, good to meet you, whatever. And the forest rangers turned up, parked his, his pickup, got out with his camera phone, walked straight over, got, do you know who these cars, there was two cars, who these two cars belong to? We went, no, mate, not close, sorry. He went over and he's taking pictures and he's looking in them and everything. And um, he's, he's walked back over and he's like, uh, are you sure? I said, mate, oh, I said, what are you going to do if you catch them anyway? Because he's stopping and asking everybody if it's their car. I said, what do you do? Hang them? Right. Or in a broad Northern Irish accent with specky pebble dash glassy. If I got my way, I would. Uh. Why? You're not allowed to park there. Why? It tells you. But what? So you'd hang them? Yes. He says, um, there's a car park here. I said, yeah, well, perhaps they're trying to save a fiver. It's all day for fiver, yeah. Oh well, she says um, we can't find them at the minute, right? Because we haven't got AMPR um, software. I said, so if I parked in the car park and didn't pay the fiver, you couldn't find me. No, I said, I know. Oh, but we will soon. I said, why? She said, well, we're going to get AMPR and whatever. I said, have you looked into that? I said, because private companies and parking on private ground. I said, have a look on YouTube, the Black Belted yeah. Barrister. He's just won a private parking fine. Really interesting. Have a look. It's, it's really good. Yeah. Something to do with uh, consumer law. You have to be presented with uh, facts and whatever, and they're not presenting them to you. They're just finding you, and he's he's got squashed for it. He was shocked. And um, have a look, Black Belted Barrister. Anyway, um, he says, 
Oh, it doesn't bother me. He says, as far as I'm concerned, it's our land. It's we can it. do what we want on our land. Mm. I mean, that's, that's really officious. You actually have to agree to the law. It's our land. I said, you're not allowed to rape people. You're not allowed to murder people. And you're not allowed to hang people. Yeah. Well. Don't make no difference, mate. Yeah? And he just walked off. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, he stayed there for about 25 minutes. And we got this gave this bloke a drink and some biscuits and, and he cleared, his mate came up as well and they're both looking at the cars and then they cleared off um, and he jumped in his car and went and it's quite funny how funny <laughs> oh, so uh, yeah but um, it, it was enjoyable it's got, got more interesting since tonight's live let's put it that way yeah yeah um, anyway I need anyway, to go. I need yeah, to go now anyway. Yeah, no worries, mate. Yeah, I've got nipped down to Tesco's. We ain't got nothing in the house. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got to go and join a kid's party, so. <laughs> you know what? It's 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. It's 10 o'clock at night here, and it's 27 degrees. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uh, 11 o'clock today, it was 34 degrees. Mm. Andre, well, it's, Andre. It's 9 o'clock at night here. And I'm going to Tesco's and I'm scared of getting mugged. No, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll better go anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, what we, you're going to try and join us. Uh, Luke's in. It's Dora's yeah, right. organising Saturday. Yeah, yeah, I'll try and do it if we can. Yeah. Yeah, no way. It's Dora's organising it. So, um, yeah. What time are you thinking? Uh, if, if it's not... I don't know, but... Um, seven, as no, always. Dora, what do you think? Yeah, it's seven, I would say. Yeah, because yeah, it's getting dark early now, isn't it? Yeah. 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 As, as Dora's arranging it, if we don't get activity, she's giving us a... She'll come and clean all our houses, guaranteed, isn't it, Dora? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. It's not a problem. Okay. Right. <laughs> when I think you've got a bed at hours, it's that bad. But <laughs> so just put it uh, up, whatever, yeah, and I'll well, let you know if me and Ken are going to be able to make it or not. So yeah. 7.30 for the car park. Go for yeah, yeah, yeah. See how you feel, yeah. Um, if you want to come on all later and leave earlier, you know what it's like with Wavy. Yeah, sure, sure. So, um, okay. So, uh, so yeah. I will right. hopefully see you there Saturday. I'll end the broadcast. Thanks everyone yeah. for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Now. Thank you. Uh, Have a good 